Picking is always a struggle for beginner guitarists. It's amazing how awkward holding this little thing and actually making it hit the strings nicely can be. It's often hard to hit the right strings, feels awkward to hold, and it can just be just difficult all around. In this video, I wanted to give you a workout to help work on your picking. I wanted to make it fun. Learning songs is always the most fun part about learning guitar. All of them are beginner friendly and they're gonna work on your picking to help you pick like a pro. You can use these as great quick exercise to work on your picking hand and make it just a little bit more comfortable. First up, we've got Heart of Gold by Neil Young. This one's a really cool riff with some strumming and some picking thrown in, so let's take a look at it. All right, so first off as the chords, we're gonna be starting on an E minor seven, like this, if you haven't played it before. So you're gonna start with playing open sixth string, and then you're gonna do the strumming. So down, 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 down. Just listen to me play it, and then try and play it along too. Then you're gonna to switch to a D, keeping this third finger in place, using that as the anchor. And you're gonna play from here. Just two strums down on the D chord before switching to an E minor. But in this time, we're gonna play it with the first and second finger, just because it's gonna make the picking a little bit easier. So up to this point before the riff is gonna sound like this. The actual strumming is not too hard, and there's only one up strum, the rest are all down strums. Just listen, get a feel for the groove of it. The important part here is going to be picking. So then after this E minor, we're just gonna do a really simple riff. It's gonna be... So, open fifth, hammer onto the second fret, open fourth, pick the second fret. That's all there is to the riff. And then to start it off again, you're gonna play that open sixth string. So played for you in full, the whole thing sounds like this. Pretty straightforward, it's a fun one to practice because you get this picking mixed in with these chords here. Now, last note is this one is great to work on your hammer-ons. They're a really useful thing because they sound really nice, they let you play faster, and you only have to pick once. Make sure you're really hammering down, nice and hard, it is called a hammer-on, so make sure you're picking it hard and trying to get this note to ring out pretty nicely. Besides that, this one shouldn't be too difficult. Practice it slowly, work your speed up, and in a short period of time, you should be able to play this one. Final cool little note that makes this one nice is make sure you're holding this second fret of the fourth string when you play the sixth string open again. So you hear how you get that both ringing out, which kind of makes it a more complex sound. A lot of beginners tend to have everything really choppy. You know, it just sounds a lot more smooth if you have everything kind of ringed together. And it'll help you give more of a professional sound. Moving on, we've got Day Tripper by the Beatles. This one's a pretty fun riff. Pretty fun, and this one's gonna stretch out your fingers and work on getting these big stretches here. All right, so let's learn the notes here. First things first, we're gonna be playing in second position, which means that whenever you're playing the second fret, you're using your first finger, third fret, you're using your second finger, and fourth fret, you're using your third finger, no matter the string. So just keep that in mind, this one's gonna stretch out your fingers here. So you're gonna start open sixth, then third, and fourth fret. 
then moving up to the second fret of the fifth string. Then second fret of the fourth, open fourth. Then back to the second fret of the fifth, then to the fourth fret of the fourth. Make sure you're using the third finger. Now when you're going from the second fret of the fifth string to the second fret of the fourth, just roll your finger down. Don't actually lift it up and change it. Just a nice roll, flat finger, and you're gonna So you're actually gonna be playing with a flat. You usually want a curled finger, but when you're going down one string, this makes it easier. So. Then to end off, second fret of the fifth string, open fourth, second on the fourth. All together. So there are all the notes for this riff. We rush that a few times if you need to. The important thing for this one here is it is actually pretty fast, the full riff, and this really shows the importance of learning it nice and slowly. When you try and play it too fast, too quickly, you're just going to fumble around all the notes and it's just not going to come out clearly. So start off really slow, like work on it as slow as you need to. And just start off that slow or slower if you need to. Work on it until you're comfortable at that speed and only once you're comfortable and can play it cleanly, you can speed it up. If you can't play it well slowed down, you're not going to be able to play it well speed up. But if you can play it well slowed down, then it's going to be very easy to speed up. And often speeding up is actually the easiest part once you've learned how to play it cleanly first. So that's the important thing of this one because the full one is fast. And this will probably be one of your faster riffs if you learn it. Start slowly, get it clean, and then speed up once you're ready for it. Next up is Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd. I'm just gonna teach this section here and it's a great one to practice strumming and then switching to precise picking and then going back and forth. So starting off here, we're gonna be going from our E minor seven as our first chord and our second chord is gonna be a G. So between these, we can keep our third and fourth finger on these strings on the exact same spot the entire time throughout this riff, which is gonna really help ring everything out nicely. So we're gonna start off, then we're gonna play third fret on the sixth string, then open fifth, hammer on to the second fret, open fourth, then pick the second fret of the fourth string. The important thing here is to note which fingers I'm using. So again, third and fourth is in the same spot. Play the second finger on your third fret there. Then your first finger goes here. And then your second finger is gonna play this fourth string. Why? Because it makes our positioning good for the next chord, which is gonna be E minor seven. We're just gonna plop this finger on again, and then we've got the full chord. That's gonna be the first half of the riff. Then moving on the second half, still keep these two fingers in place, and it's gonna be basically just going back down. So two and zero on the fourth string, then two and zero on the fifth string. And then you go to your G chord. Put 
those two sections together and we're basically just going up and down on this nice rough. The riff's not too complicated. The tough part here is going to be switching between your actual strumming and then playing the notes accurately in between. One thing that can really help this is just looking straight down at your picking hand and then looking at the strings that you're trying to play. Eventually you'll get to the point where you don't need to look, but it really helps in the accuracy early on to look down, just like you're probably used to looking at your left hand. Sometimes you wanna look at your right to be more accurate. There you go, there's the full riff. Practice that nice and slowly, just like everything. Once it's smooth at a slow speed, then you can start to ramp up the speed. This one's not too fast anyway, so it should sound pretty good even at a really slow speed. If you learned something in this video, please hit that thumbs up button, say hi in the comments below, and subscribe if you haven't already. If you do want to improve your chords in 14 days, then check out my 14-day chord challenge in the link in the description below this video. It's 14 days of step-by-step -step practice where I tell you exactly what to do every day, and in the end of just two weeks, you're going to have much clearer and faster chords. And if you're currently struggling with your bar chords, make sure to tune in next week where I'm going to give you a similar workout like this, but for bar chords to help those play a lot easier and smoother. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.